always taking out the trash. It's always me. It's always me. Yo, what are y'all doing? Aren't y'all supposed to be getting prepared for wind down time? I'm taking out the trash. Y'all either supposed to be getting food or taking your asses upstairs to relax. What? Matter of fact, let me talk to y'all real quick. There may be some confusion on the channel. Ayo, weren't you just pushing out a good amount of Tekken videos? Now we're doing wind down? What are you doing? Listen, I'm confused. I don't even know what I'm doing half of the time. But you know what I feel like doing? Wind down. So if I feel like doing wind down time every freaking day of the week, I'm gonna do it every freaking day of the week. Yeah, right? Shut up. In a very respectful way. So, <laughs> how about y'all uh, take y'all behinds upstairs? I'll meet y'all there. Peace out. Oh, see y'all soon. Today I decided to take it back and watch some SSG animations. I believe we got some IMR skit. I just spoiled it. This is SSG Animations, four true creepy pasta horror stories animated. We're gonna watch first one. Let's just go with the first one. Then the next the next one we'll do the second one. For a person who is permanently traveling like me, it's a very strange thing to not like hotels. I don't need but, you. You know, I am very justified in doing so. People don't like hotels for different reasons, but mm -hmm. very few have reasons like me to hate them so much. Why do you hate them? I mean, how many of them almost got gutted in a hotel? It not, all started one night in July. Not me. I remember that particularly that day, it was much hotter than the rest. I was coming back from dropping my kids off at my brother's house. My wife and I used to work a lot of jobs, and when the two of us would agree on a short trip... If you drive with two hands, like, if, you, if you're literally comfortable driving with two hands, right, and you do that on a daily basis, you're going to work, you drive with two hands, you go to the convenience store, you drive with two hands, you go shopping, you drive with two hands. I honestly think that you may be a psychopath, because... You're comfortable. <laughs> you're you're actually comfortable. If you don't take that right hand off and just keep your left hand on top of the steering wheel and drive properly, my boy. My brother was always helpful in taking care of my son. Besides, he loved to play with his cousins, even though they lived far away. Always a I vibe. was driving back down the road, but my car started to run out of gas. This had been completely my fault. By yeah. doing everything in such a hurry, I missed things as important as this. Yeah, that's foolish. Knowing that I would soon run out of gas in the middle of nowhere, I decided to stop a little early and stay in a hotel. The hotel was neither too good nor too bad. It was the typical roadside hotel that had just enough to survive. And that's although I didn't expect much from this hotel, I admit that it managed to surprise me. That doesn't... Even though all the lights worked and it even had a fan and a cable TV. That doesn't look like a hotel. I asked for a room and after taking a hot shower, I decided to watch TV for a while and go to sleep. I know you and got bed bugs. That's when it all started. I know you got bed bugs and I know it. SSG animations, not YouTube. When I opened my eyes, I woke up confused and forgot where I was. When my vision started to clear, I swear I saw something in front of me. Something, someone was standing in the corner of the room. Understanding where Yo. I was and knowing that someone could have gotten into my room, I cleared my eyes and looked again. Is it still there? No one was there. That looked like Jeff the Killer. Still worried, I turned on the light and checked the whole room. No one could have entered, the door was locked, and could only be locked from the inside. I would have kept the lights Just on. in case, I looked in every nook and cranny of the room and found nothing. Why are you smiling in this situation? Not the slightest indication that anyone had been in the room with me. That hotel looks crazy. vision failing me? Maybe it was an all-too-real dream that mixed with reality and made no. me believe that there was someone in front of me. You saw what you saw. Even though I was sure that there was no one with me, Why'd you go this back time it was much more difficult for me to fall asleep. I don't blame you. But eventually, I did. I fell asleep with the TV on so I could light up the room. Again. I would have had the light on but completely. You're not paying again, the bills. This time, I was sure that someone was with me, since I could hear him walking. You as can soon hear as I opened Yo, my eyes, what I could the see perfectly that there was a person in front of me. This person was white. His eyes and mouth were very marked, and his look was completely white or insane. pale. The person was walking in my direction in the dark, very slowly while looking at me. I would have been frozen. Every step he took, it was as if I was not aware that he was walking towards me, even though I was directly looking at him. Seems like it a dream. It was at that moment that I realized that he was not walking towards me. To the he TV? He was walking towards the television. What the as hell? As soon as he reached the TV, he turned he it off. his fingers to the switch and turned it off. Nah! Suddenly, the room nah! was filled with absolute darkness. Nah! I would My eyes... By the time he was walking to the TV, I would have got my ass up already through that door. I wouldn't have touched his pale ass. That dude looked like Jeff the Killer. If y'all don't know who Jeff the Killer is, look at look him up. Actually, don't. Y'all not gonna be sleeping for a couple nights. I'm telling y'all right now. But oh, yo, yo, I would have been out already. Cause ain't no way. Now he's turning around in darkness with his red ass lips. Glowing May have adapted in the dark. to the light, but this was not normal. Even without a television, you should have been able to see something of the room. But it was completely engulfed in darkness. You couldn't see anything at all, as if you were in another dimension. 
What I could do was listen. Terrified and paralyzed with he fear, can't be that I lay far in bed away. listening slowly to this person's footsteps towards me. You this laid time, back there in was bed? No TV in the way or anything. Bro, what are you what are you talking about? You lay back in bed? Yo, this is a free kill. That could attract his attention. That's a that's a free kill streak. The footsteps were directly towards me. I reached quickly to turn on the bedside lamp, but it didn't work. Oh yeah, Thinking done. quickly, I pulled out my cell phone and activated the flashlight mode. I quickly pointed the cell phone at the source of the footsteps, but to my utter surprise and confusion, there was no one there. What? I shone my light everywhere, but nothing. It was as if, once again, whoever was with me had disappeared. What? As I searched, I heard a noise coming from another direction. What direction? The only place I had not yet searched. What? It was on the roof! That wasn't a human! It couldn't be human! It was stuck to the ceiling like a spider! As soon as I saw it, it looked back at me and suddenly fell to my bed, trapping me underneath Yo, it. what? I tried to move, oh! but I was so scared and oh! frozen with fear that my body didn't respond. Oh, he on top I can only of you. watch him crawl in slow motion. I know, from the I foot know of the it. I know, face. I know his Once best thing. Once he reached my side, it he stinks. opened his mouth and let his saliva drip down on top of him. <laughs> Fuck out of here! Uh uh, uh uh, uh uh. That fear would have went away. That fear would have went away. That fear would have went away. I would have been disgusted. I would have been pissed. I would have fought. I would have beat his. B oh, oh, that whole skin would have turned brown. That whole skin would have gave you some color. I would have gave you some color. Purple, red, blue, gray, something. It's already gray because you're pale. Oh, I would have been so frustrated. Oh my, it stinks! Look at it! It's a, it, look at it! Eager to hurt me. Knowing how scared I was and the fact that I was so scared I couldn't move, the monster pulled back my sheet and left my body exposed to him. He trying to, he trying to- As if he were a cat playing with its prey. He trying to he get you- He pulled back my shirt and looked a, at me again. Oh, he won- Amused by the fact a, I was crying inconsolably. Once he did this, the man began to scratch my stomach- Be his ass! The pain was unbearable. There was no way I was going to survive it. The scratching was getting stronger and more violent, and it was tearing my skin. My skin was splitting open. More dizzy than I'd ever been in my life, I managed to come to my senses and gave him a hard blow on the head that knocked him off the bed. It took you long enough. In great pain, I ran it to the front door, enough. but it was locked. I grabbed the key that was a few inches Bro. away from me, and I tried to put the right key in. You just gotta fight for your As life. As I did so, I turned around, he and got there up. he was sitting on my bed with a big smile on his face, staring at me and amused by the fact that I was so desperate that I couldn't even open a door. I managed to open it and ran as fast as I could. I ran through the hotel to my car, and once I was about to get in, I turned around to look at the hotel. Is he there? What I saw left me frozen once again. The hotel... It was gone. Was abandoned. There was nothing left of the hotel I had originally seen. All this time, I was in a ghost hotel. There was no one in it. The walls were destroyed or not even there. The walls were full of Check mold your wound. and in front of everything, a big sign indicated that the place was closed. Check your stomach. You know what the worst part was? I could see the room I was in from the outside since the wall of the room was missing. Uh huh. That room was never locked. Bed bugs! In the bed where I had slept bed was bugs. rotten and full of maggots. You disgusting! As I took a better look, I could see that someone was lying down. It was the man who was chasing me. Suddenly, he got out of bed without difficulty and after getting into a spider position, he ran towards me with all speed. Just before he caught up with me, I jumped into my car and accelerated as fast as I could, <laughs> leaving that scary place You don't want his sneakers. <laughs> Once I was home, I canceled my trip and went immediately to see my psychologist, who said that everything I experienced was caused by the stress I was under at that moment, and that he would be seeing me to see how I would evolve. What stress? When I described I what I saw, my children assumed that something else had happened to me. With According to my descriptions, that night I met Jeff the Killer. What about- A terrifying monster who was known to be in one of the most popular creepypastas on the internet. When I saw the picture of Jeff the Killer, I started crying in front of my kids. It was like reliving that terrifying night all over again. I had no idea what that being was and why he decided to torture me to the point of almost killing me. I only know that I lost a little more innocence that day and started to believe in everything. Who knows what you might encounter tomorrow? Oh my. Yo! Yo! Yo, that's gonna give me nightmares. Oh, that's gonna give me nightmares. Because when I first saw Jeff the Killer, I, I, and the thing is, it, it's such a crazy experience. It's just that when you visualize him, right? And you see it and you look into the background of like the description of Jeff the Killer. It's like this dude is real. Is he real? I don't know. Who is Creepypasta? What is Creepypasta? I've been hearing this so often lately. Was he still injured? Was his stomach still hurt? Why did he even look back? And, and, and like I would have been gone already. Oh, that was good. SSG Animations, you never disappointed when we first started with you.
Golly, Lord have mercy. Next. Second video is IMR Scary Tales, and this is three true smile dog horror stories animated. Everything has to have a smile now since the first video, right? Right? Ayo, you, cho you chose these videos, didn't you? You're an idiot. This is the second story. I discounted the smile dog when I first heard about what it. What the hell is this? I considered this? it another urban legend, but that was before I met Alex. What's before Alex? I realized the true Who's horror Alex? hidden behind those smiling, malevolent eyes. And before I understood how a simple image on a computer screen could cause such terror. Yeah. On a calm Friday night, everything started. What started? When my friend Alex called, I was at home looking up information online. He begged me to come over right away, nope. sounding frantic and trembling in his voice. Nope, you're on your I own. I snatched up my jacket out of concern and nah. headed over to his house. You're on your own. When I got there, I discovered Alex huddled in a corner of his dimly lit living room, his laptop open in front of him. He was visibly shaken. Sweat beads glistening. And on his you forehead. you decided to bring me into this situation with you. You're not my friend. Without saying a word, he turned the screen to face me after motioning for me to sit next to him. No. I fixed my attention on the picture filling the screen. You could have just sent me a it picture. It was a straightforward illustration of a Siberian husky dog sporting an unnaturally wide and menacing grin. Its eyes were a fiery red, almost like they were on fire. So close and the its laptop. Teeth were sharp. Close Too the sharp for any dog. Close the freaking laptop. I uncontrollably. It's not hard. Trying to conceal my unease, I asked. What is this? Exactly. Alex said in a trembling voice. What? It's the smile dog, man. I noticed it. I saw the damn thing, and now I can't stop thinking about it. With so, skepticism, I so arched why, an eyebrow. Why are you calling me? Alex, it's just a scary picture, Close man. the freaking... How's it gonna hurt you? Close the laptop. While shaking his head. Alex kept his gaze fixed on the monitor. Something wrong with you. You don't get it. Just like you're doing right now. I looked at it, but it persisted even after I closed the tab. In my dreams, it stuck with me. I leaned in closer. Don't look at to it. Understand don't look at it either. Afraid. Do not look at it too. Do not do it. Dreams. With his voice trembling, Alex inhaled deeply. In my dream, that dog and I are both confined to a pitch black space. It's standing there with me, grinning. And its eyes are piercing. It repeatedly urges me to spread the word. I can still hear it whispering in the back of my mind every time I wake up. Even though I was beginning to feel uneasy, I had to control my fear. Keep God in your life? So what are you asking me to do? Exactly. Alex gave me a desperate look Why as you he turned to me? face me. I need your help, man. Help with it what? needs to be removed. How Please. can I? Call the Thank priest. You. Call the church. Go to church. I can't do nothing for you. Need to spread the word. Spread what word? Warning and get people to stop. Stop Torn what? between doubt and concern for my friend, I paused. But I couldn't desert Alex in his hour of need. Yes, you can. Because the fear in his eyes was real. If you any of my friends watching said, this, don't do this to me. Okay, man, we'll share the picture. But after that, you need to see a doctor. Why can't you share? In order share to alert why, why? people to the evil force behind the smile dog image, we posted it on various social media sites. There were a variety of reactions. Wait, some what are you... of which discounted it as a hoax, and others shared their own anxieties and experiences. They're trying but to the keep... unease that had descended upon us was undeniable. They're trying to keep people we away got a from the photo. From an unknown person on social media as the night wore on. But you share the a photo. Blank profile picture and random letters and numbers made up the username. That would just make You've it worse. Been warned, Excuse was me. Was all that was written in the message. What? Alex and I looked at each other anxiously. Fuck but you we mean? refused to be intimidated by a user who chose to remain anonymous. We persisted in our efforts to inform others in the hopes that by doing so, we would be able to reverse the curse. Days turned into They're weeks, just making it worse. the smile dog started to encroach in our lives in ways we never could have anticipated. Its voice echoed ominously in our dreams as we heard its whispers in the darkness of our bedrooms. Every day brought us closer to insanity and greater desperation. I was using the laptop to browse the internet by myself one evening when I got a message. Saying Alex what? Alex had requested a video call. In anticipation of seeing his anxious face on the screen, I agreed to it. But what I had witnessed chilled my blood. There was Alex, but he had lifeless eyes and a contorted face. Spread the word, he said with a hollow tone in his voice. The call ended abruptly before I had a chance to react and speak to him. I panicked as soon as I realized that something had control over my friend. I frantically called the police and tried to explain the situation as best I could without mentioning the smile dog. When they got to Alex's house, they discovered him frozen with a manic smile and a catatonic state. The authorities were at a loss Johnny as to Bravo? what had happened to him, 
and I was unable to bring myself to Handsome tell the Squidward? Truth. Like, what are we doing? The smile dog had a negative impact on Alex. Why? It was only a matter Why? of time before it came. Why she got her fist, her fist clenched up like that? What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? What, what are we doing? Unclench your fist, Shorty. You're not doing nothing. You're stupid. You did this to yourself. No one told you to continue with his antics. You could have just closed the laptop and minded your business. But look at you, stressing. <laughs> Couldn't be me. The smile dog had a negative impact on Alex. And you too. It was only a matter of time before it came for me. Yeah. I can hear it in the shadows, pleading with me to spread the word as I sit by myself in my darkened room. I'm unable to evade its menacing gaze. And I worry that before long, I'll be like Alex, a pawn in the hands of an evil force. I'm telling you this story right now to ask for assistance, not as a warning. If you ever encounter the smile dog, avoid looking into its eyes. I'm not looking at shit. Using its image. Don't worry. Dreaming about it. I'm looking at shit. Once it has its teeth in your soul. Teeth on its dick. It's impossible to escape. Oh, I'm, I'm not looking. This is so why would you put it in our own face? Why, why, why would you do that to me? I am our scary tales. Why would you willingly put that in my face after you explicitly told us what could happen? I'm not understand you, you, the woman. Why would you do that? You know what he was going through. Did it not process in your brain that this could be a demonic force in the back end? Did you not? Did you not consider that? Why would you want to spread the word? <sighs> Next. Interesting, right? This is Mort. Mort has two channels. The first channel he ended, and now this is the new one. And it looks like his whole entire art style completely changed. So I went back still. I went back to like years ago. And this is one of like the, the animations that he that he had. Um, and then I'm gonna, I think the next video is also going to be Mort again, but a little bit more recent. And you're gonna see like the differences. I'm gonna be honest with you, like back then it looked like it was a bit more gory. Um, I don't know if I want to put that on my channel. I'll think about it, but here we go. This is True McDonald's Horror Story Animated. It's now for over five years, and this is still my creepiest experience. You're talking without, hold on. I've been working at McDonald's now for over five years, and this is still my creepiest experience there. You still work there is what you're telling this me. This happened two years ago when I was 18, and I had been working my first overnight shift on front counter. I would have quit so fast if anything I happened. I usually work in the kitchen on overnights, so I had no interactions with any of the customers until then. I was working from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m., which yeah. is a usual overnight shift. Y'all don't have co-workers during these overnight shifts? Why y'all working by yourselves? I'm not signing up for that. Ain't no work. For us. I Around never worked 3 overnight. Around 3 a.m., I was making some fries when I noticed a man standing there and trying to take pictures with his cell phone of me and my other female co-worker, Rebecca. Okay, okay. There we I go. I pointed it out to her, and she just rolled her eyes in annoyance. Yo, the animation is nice. went to take an order and drive through telling me it happened back a there? lot. Oh, never mind. My fault. I was instantly uncomfortable. I wanted to tell the manager, but he was in the office doing his manager stuff, and I didn't want to bother him. The McDonald's manager is not looking like that. I what I felt was a nervous smile, and quickly did my usual greeting. Hello, what can I get for you? He just kind of looked at me and stayed quiet. He was about 5'8", white, early 20s, medium build with dark hair and brown eyes. An average man, I would say. But something about his piercing glare made me feel super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Then he smiled, a smile that sent shivers down my spine. I'll just have a coffee. He's giving Black, me sweetie. Mahito, uh, mojito vibes. He said, and I could instantly mojito smell energy alcohol right now. on his breath. Yeah, he dirty. I nodded and told him the price before he pulled out a $5 bill and went to hand it to me, making sure our hands touched. I avoided his gaze and went to hand back his change when he winked at me and went to go wait for his coffee. This is, yeah, this is Mahito right here. I went to go make it as fast as I could. Why are your hands so, why are your arms so long? My oh my we gosh. We out of coffee on both the front counter and the drive-thru as we don't sell much through the night. You must be slender man looking I like that. I turned around and kept as little eye long. contact as I possibly could. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to brew you a fresh pot. Should only take about three minutes. Don't worry, I don't mind. I have quite the view while I wait. Oh, he replied, shooting oh, me a oh, wink. Oh, you're on my, you're I on my body. I just smiled awkwardly and looked away. 
I had to make sure I didn't fall behind on my shift, so I began to set up the muffins on the display so we had them all ready for breakfast, which starts at 4 a.m. in Canada. Mm. So, Susan, I heard behind me, realizing it was the guy. How does he know my name? I instantly tensed, wondering how he knew my name before I noticed I had my name tag on and quietly cursed to myself. Yeah. (laughs) I turned around and looked at him, and he said, What time are you stuck here until tonight, beautiful? Don't worry about it. I instantly panicked as I didn't do well in these situations. They say don't worry about it. I, uh, seven, I said nervously. Why would you tell him that? Which then the guy gave me a huge grin. Oh, so you still have time before you're off, eh? I guess. I nodded and noticed the coffee was done pouring. So I went over and made his coffee as he watched me with an intense stare. He's really on your body. I handed it to him before saying, have a nice night, earning me another wink. He then waved and said as he turned around, I'll see you later, Susan. That's insane. I watched as he walked out the door and tried to calm myself down. He doesn't actually know when I'm off. Yes. So I'm okay. Oh, so you lied. I thought to myself. Good job. 6 a.m. rolled around, and it was finally time to go. So you said earlier? You said 7 a.m., but you get off at 6? But I knew it was now in the past. My coworker Chris was going to drop me off at home as we carpooled. Okay, good. So we got our stuff together and left. So there was Chris and Rebecca. Chris, this whole time you didn't think about helping her out? Hey, yo, Chris. Hey, yo, Chris, I'm calling you out. What you doing? Help your coworker. Stupid. We're heading to his car. I noticed a parked car with someone in it. There's no way. Course, There's no way he was sitting there for that long. It was the guy. Oh my gosh. I panicked and oh quickly gosh. told Chris, that was the guy, as I had told him what happened not long ago. He instantly brought me into his coat and did his best to keep me hidden as we walked quickly to his car. You fiend. He made sure no one followed the car, dropped me off, and watched as I went inside, telling me to stay safe. Chris, he about to come for you. I thanked him before going into my house and going to bed. Do you have parents? The but next you said you're only like 18. I went into work and got asked by my manager how I got home. I told them Chris gave me a ride. Why are you asking me that? Isn't that something that we always do? My manager do? looked confused and said something that made my blood run cold. Oh, that's strange because some guy was here looking for you just before seven. He said he was here to pick you up. What? I thought before that the man's intentions weren't good. Just the way he looked at me and spoke to me. Like I was prey. And this pretty much confirmed it. Since then, I have refused to work front counter overnight shift. And we no longer wear our name tags overnight. That's, you see, the thing about this is that it's more realistic. Like stuff like this does happen. It kind of makes it a little bit more scarier than usual. Imagine she didn't leave and Chris already left. He comes at that time. She's now put in a position where anything can go left. Shit can go left at any moment. That is the problem right there. She And he could have followed them too. So he didn't actually see her. He didn't see her, he saw Chris. Dang, so what would have happened if he saw her with Chris? Chris would have been in danger too. Oh, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Next. This is Mort again for Walking Alone at Night Horror Stories Animated. We're going to do the last story, story four. Demir. Then I can go about my I day. thought I would pick a story from my past. For some reason, <clears throat> it has made a resurgence and has almost become an unwelcomed guest in my mind. Has it now? Perhaps sharing it will help me get over it. It won't. Once and for all. It won't. The year was 1986. I was 16 at the time. I was in Indianapolis at Union Station. It was around Christmas time or just after. I was with my mom, my two-year-old sister, and my 21-year-old uncle. At this time, my uncle still lived in Indianapolis, while the rest of us lived in southwest Indiana. We were getting ready to leave and drive back home. It was very cold out that day. I I was bundled up in my jacket, scarf, and gloves. My mom, God rest her soul, could talk a dead man back to life. So I was just waiting for her long-winded wrap-up. 
It was getting hot standing inside Union Station while wearing all that clothing. So I told her, It's getting too hot in here. I'm oh, gonna step out for a talking. minute. My mom nodded, and I went out. Yo, there was no why snow that? or wind. Just perfect for me to cool down for a bit. Not even a minute or so of standing outside, right by the double doors. Somebody? A white Chevrolet pulls up. Two big men with crew cuts were sitting in the driver and passenger two, seats. Two big men. <laughs> they were at least 6'5", and probably about 280 pounds each. I figured they were probably from our local military base, but that was just an assumption. Making me think about the men in black. Immediately after seeing me, they stop at the curb, Oh, he's trying to holler. roll down the window, and smile. Hey, come here. I want to talk to you. Nah, do not. If the you passenger did, said. What did you do? Bear in mind that I'm 16. Mm -hmm. If this were to happen to me today, uh, things would be much different. Okay, I can understand But that. as a kid, yeah. I was very polite. Yeah. Almost to the point of being docile. Okay. All I right. was always very apologetic when I thought I'd screwed up in some way. I'm still like that. I look up you. and I saw a street light above me. Apologetic. I looked back at them and started apologetically stating, Oh, I'm sorry. This is not what it looks like. <laughs> At that moment, Yo. it was more amusing to me. I hadn't really considered that I was in some kind of danger. Mm. They kept reiterating that they just wanted to talk to me. About and what? I kept explaining to them that I'm not a street girl. Yeah. And this is not what it looked like. And that I was sorry for giving the wrong impression. Bro, she got... It didn't occur to me that they weren't listening to a word that I was saying. He's fully clothed. All of a sudden, the passenger gets out. I would have walked away. And starts moving toward me. Nah. Like a hungry dog. Nah. Staring at a T-bone steak. Shorty, you need a, you need a, you a need switch a went off in my head. And I was no longer apologetic or embarrassed. Okay. I was just pissed. And I yelled. You don't have to get out of your car if you just want to talk to me. I feel I that. I hear you just fine from here. Uh-huh. Talk right. I suddenly found the 70% Irish and Scandinavian heritage on my dad's side. And it came out in full force. Mm. I was proud of myself for having shown some backbone. He still didn't stop moving though. But there was still a towering, hulking man coming right towards me. He's taking a long time to get I to you. I bolted back inside, where my mom was still yammering. Upon seeing me, my mom and uncle were immediately alarmed. They hadn't seen the man get out of his car, but they could tell that I was frightened. Mm -hmm. I told them what happened, and my uncle asked... What were they driving? A white Chevrolet. My mom then cut in. Go get him. Go get him. My uncle bolted out of the door and down the street, chasing after the Shorty Chevrolet. Shorty said, go get him. <laughs> get the hell out of the car so I can bust out your teeth. Damn. My mom was livid. But I could tell that my baby sister was getting upset. So I tried talking her down. My uncle came back in a few minutes later, winded and worn out. When he caught his breath, he said, oh, I almost caught up with him when they got to that traffic light at the end of the block, but they peeled out right before I got there. Welp, that put a major damper on our trip to Indianapolis. So he's talking like the- The moral of the story is, ladies and gents, don't allow your good manners to supersede your own safety. Duh. Who wants to die being polite? All right, so that's the end of it? All right, yeah, that, that's the end of it. Okay, now I can get up. Well, I already ate. I already ate. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. And like always, thank you for watching. Catch you next time. Captain Ayo out. Peace.